All right, this is week seven, minute 70. And just so you know, I'm gonna do both lessons in this because it takes so much time to download. So I'll be doing minute 70 and week seven, day one um, math. So you're just gonna see one math video for this week. All right, so we have 40 times blank equals 10. So you have to think about that. You have 40, so let's do groups of 10, right? So there's 40, 10, 20, 30, 40. And we wanna split it and divide it into where we end up getting 10 in every group. So you would want a fourth of each group. And when you're doing a fourth, and you're doing fractions, you multiply across. Actually, that won't work for that part. 40 times one, you put 40 over one, and you would do 40 times one is 40, one times four is four, and how many times does four go into 40? 10 times. If point B is halfway between points A and C, what number does it represent? So if this is 2 and this is 16, what's halfway between 2 and 16? I'm giving you a time to think because it's 2 divided by 16, which would get you to 8. So now this is number three is order of operations so this exponents is going to be critical so you're going to add the inside and I'm going to add these two decimals and this is 30 cents and 70 cents which would get you to a dollar and if you have a dollar and add it to three dollars you would get four dollars and then they want you to square that do not get confused that this is not this is not four centimeters squared, this is four squared. That means you actually have four squared is equal to four times four, which is also equal to 16. If four and th 38 hundredths is four plus something over 10 plus eight over something. So <clears throat> they're just looking at the, they're just turning this into tenths and hundredths. So A would equal 3, and B would equal 100. They're just breaking it down into place value. So if I had $5.32, this is in the tenths, and this is in the hundredths place. And if I wanted to add that all together, I do expanded notation, it would be 5 plus 3 tenths plus 200. You do that with any number. If you spin the spinner to the right, what are the chances it will land on a one or a three? Well, there's a one and a three, so you have two out of three. So what are the chances it will land on one or three? Two out of three, or you could write two thirds, either way. For problems six through nine, solve each equation for A. If a plus 8 equals 12, then a equals, well, what plus 8 equals 12? 4. If a minus 2 equals negative 12, so you're going to do, if your number was a bigger negative, you're going to actually, when you look at this number and you subtract the 2, you would actually need to have, oops, sorry, 2, which would be 10, negative 10. Negative 10 minus 2 equals negative 12. And if I had 12 minus 2 would be negative 10, and that's where you get that by doing the opposite to isolate for variables. 
Next, negative 6a equals 48a. So if we have a negative, a negative times a negative is a positive. So we have a negative times something to get us a negative. So we this would be a positive. So 6 times what equals 48? 6 times 8 equals 48. Number 9. If a over negative 3 equals 10, so then what would a equal? So just so you know, you're going to just multiply 3 times 10 because that's the opposite of division. So we're going to multiply this. So we would multiply negative 3, which would get us to negative 30. <coughs> and it has to be a negative because two negatives, a negative divided by a negative or a negative times a negative is a positive. Again, my favorite way to do fractions is multiplying. Pay attention. 2 times 2, you just go straight across. Is 2. 4 times 4 is 16. This is not in its simplest form. They didn't ask you to do it in its simplest form, so you don't have to, but if you wanted to, 2 goes into both, so you could divide the top and the bottom both by 2, and it would get you to 1 8th. Here, this is addition. So if the denominators are the same, you carry that over and you add the numerators. So 1 plus 2 is 3, and that's its simplest form. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and, on the same video, work on this um, week 7, day 1 um, area and volume. And we've talked finding surface area um, for cubes in our lesson that we did. Every cube, just like every dice, um, an actual die, like a cube rectangular prism, has six sides. So I'm going to take, we have 10 inches high, so we're doing area. We have six sides, so I'm going to go ahead and do my six sides. Three, four, five, six sides. So these are my sides. And now <clears throat> I'm going to input my side. So I have one side and everyone, so these two sides are going to be the same. These two sides are going to be the same. And these two sides are going to be the same because I can see on both of those. So like this one's going to be a 12 by 10. So I have two 12 by 10s. See, ten, this one's 10. And if I wanted to write that there, I could. So 12 by 10. And I have two of those because the opposite side would also be the same. Then on this end, I have a 6 by 10. So I have two 6 by 10s because that would be this side and that side. So this would be side 3 and this would be side three, 4. So 6 by 10 and 6 by 10 <laughs> plus you. And then I also have a <coughs> top one which is a six, a bottom and a top, which would be a six by 12. This is the area of each side. So um, 60, six times 10 is 60, six times 12 is 72. I know someone told me, if I held my pencil right, everybody could see easier. Well, if I held my pencil right, I would be back in um, third grade and listen to my teacher, but I don't, so that's just the way it is, and that's how I write now. So if it's in your way, just wait a minute, my hand will move. Um, so now I just, for the surface area, which is all of these together, I just add them, so I'm going to put an addition symbol down here, and my, I'm going to write total surface area. And now I'm just going to go through and add my columns. My ones column has a total of four. My um, tens column is seven, 14, 16, 18, um, and 18 and 12 would be 20. So I'll put my zero. Sorry, 18 and 12 would be 30. So I'll put my 30 up here. <sighs> so th 300, 400, 500. 504 
is my total surface area, but I should label this correctly. So I would have 504 inches squared. Squared is for area. Volume is uh, the easiest. You take these three measurements, 10 times 6 times 12, and multiply them all together, and that's what you get. So I'm going to take 10, so it's length times width times height. And actually, if, if we're going to go that way, length, I mean, really it depends on how the width box is named, but the length is 12, the width is 6, and the height is 10, based on the photo or image. So <clears throat> I know that um, 12 times 6 is 72, and if I multiply that by 10, it would get me 720. And it would be inches cubed, because I used three measurements, 1, 2, 3. It would be inches cubed. All right, that takes care of day one. Have a great day.